Right, I think we're going. Tag friends. I haven't got any. Good afternoon. Uh, happy Monday. Is it Monday? Yeah, bank holiday Monday. Not be going anywhere, anywhere today. Flight pool's actually packed, apparently. Because... Everybody's gone to Blackpool. Anyway, we're doing charcoal and acrylic. This is just a charcoal one with the clay glaze, the acrylic glaze. Figure study, yeah. Uh, I've quite quickly done. Uh, you can do them in live classes. Uh, but the one we're going to do today is similar to this technique over here, which is actually put some colour on first, dry it off, charcoal over the top, and then we'll glaze it again to soften all the charcoal. Uh, we're going to draw it as well, sorry. And then we rub out the light bits, and as you rub out the charcoal, you go back to the gesso underneath, but you also go back to the colour you've got underneath. So that's the idea behind this one, okay? Uh, not done many of these, only done one, I think. But uh, it's just another way of doing uh, charcoal and acrylic technique. You can have a glaze with colour over the top, or you can put the colour on first. Or a combination of the two, okay? I've got my student with me today. Lynn. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Lynn. And she's already started, actually. So what I'm going to do, I've got some acrylic. So this is normal lining paper. People keep asking me what kind of paper it is. I just use lining paper. 1700 grade from Wix. Okay? You can get anything over 14. You're okay. Don't get the recycled stuff. It's rubbish. Um, we give it a coat of gesso. Acrylic gesso. So it's got a plastic film on it. Eh? So anything I put on is not going to sink into the paper. So that's the main reason we do it. I think you can see me head on there. It's the main reason we do it, so it doesn't soak into the paper, stays on the surface and they can remove it. You also make sure you don't put the colour on too thick, because if you put it on too thick, it won't be able to rub it out. Okay? So it's like a glaze. So that's what I'm going to do first. I've got some cadmium yellow, I've got some alizarine. I don't need loads of this. Just put it out. I'm using Galleria, okay? And then I've got some phthalo green, which is similar to this, because this is, <laughs> let me just show you. Why not do it exactly the same? So it's yellow at the bottom, it's a lizarine in the middle, and it's phthalo green, blue, um, green at the top. Yeah? Uh, so we put all that on first. And as you rub out, we create these uh, highlights. And it's a nice effect. I do like doing these. I get bored with doing just uh, painting. I like doing it different. So, got a little bit of green as well. And um, what you need to do, get clean water and make sure you put this lovely wash on. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to add a little bit. Of, so the red, I can put over this side. I get a nice warmth, but it's a nice clean wash. Okay, uh, it doesn't matter about the runs. And then here, I just added a bit of green on this side. Uh, uh, okay, um, and you can turn it around if it's running too much. So you want the red and the yellow kind of go in a different direction. All right, and then we use an air dryer. To dry it off quite quickly. It also stops it running. Right. Stops it running. Nice blendy wash. Just be careful with electricity and water, as you know. Uh, do it that way. Got some nice thick paint there as well. It's a lovely textured. I've got warmth going to cool. Uh, if you wanted to add any more colour, you like some yellow here or the top or in there, yeah. Or even a bit of lizarine. 
Yeah. Especially where the darks are in the figure. Especially the hair. Okay. In that section. Then you can do. And right. Don't keep scrubbing. So when you keep scrubbing, you're just going to blend all the colours together. So this is that in it. And blend all the colours together and you just get a mucky brown, okay? You want to keep the colour. Very warm in here today. Lovely outside. If it's taken a while, just a little bit, get rid of the excess moisture, so you get a nice flat tone. When you put your dress on, try to brush stroke, so when you start rubbing out, sorry, when you start rubbing out the brush strokes of your dress will come through. Okay, it's good, it could go a bit cockle, so don't worry about it. Uh, I think we're still in the right place. Just check with my camera. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of dark tones in this. We're going to get a nice uh, flesh tone. And when we use willow charcoal as well, you're going to get different tones. Some willow is a very, very kind of dark tone, and you end up with it won't go on that well. It comes off too easy. See, this is okay. Can you see? As I put that on. I'm going to cover everything up, cover all this, all this uh, colour, like that. just to give me the taller values in the picture. Now, like I said, it needs to be bone dry. If it's not bone dry, the charcoal's going to stick to the dirt bits, wet bits, and you know, won't get it off as easy. Like that. So this is willow charcoal. Not compressed, willow. Okay, cover it all up, like that. Uh, blend it so we get a nice flat glaze, which is a, a nice grey tone, like that. which is in the picture, it's in the figure, it's in the background. I don't have to kind of do the, uh, the sheet at the back of it or whatever. This is from a live, live model website. So you can actually uh, go online, find some images, uh, you can pay as well, or you can do classes if you like, or you can just get some bits there for you. Tie up to you. Okay, um, I've just got a bit of, very damp there, so just have to be careful with that, very wet. Try and dry it off, move the tape in. So it doesn't come off. So we need this tape to stick to the gun. That'll stick. So it's touch sensitive. Touch sensitive uh, masking tape. So even though it gets wet. Uh, still stick, okay. Oh, it should do wet through it, but all right. Um, we're going to dry it now. So, get some stick of willow again. And um, I've actually done it this way because I wanted the warm over here and I want it to go cool. It looks like it's a bit wet in these places where it's stuck, but it doesn't matter that much. I'm use it as texture. So, if we look at the figure. And this, uh, we need to kind of just keep it out so I can see it better. 
like that. And then we need the head. So the head is right down here, left hand corner, take it up nearly half the picture. Okay, so we do a big circle. And if you measure the head on the picture, it's one, two, to the crease in her elbow, and then two and a half, really. So the figure itself from the head on the floor is the one, two, two and a half. So we've got that shape, which is about here. All right, and then we do it the, the other way, roughly, get in that way. So it's one head, two head, and a bit. So from the back, you're gonna go, you're gonna count as one head, okay? Two head. Your foot is going to be about there. So you've got enough space. That's the reason we do it. So you can get the, pic the person, the figure, within this space without chopping the legs off or anything, or the feet. Okay? So that's the, uh, the dark tone. I'm just going to blend. That's the hair. I've got some nice actual textures there with the hair's kind of going off the picture, so this is where we can do a bit of planning. So our back is about here, okay? And again, we use the head for measuring, one, two, that's one, two, so that's going to be actually near to where uh, the crease in her arm is, which is about there. So if we look at the head and then say, right, uh, the shoulder from that angle is about halfway, so it's like, that space, her shoulder is here, and then it's connected up, can you see? So you're just connecting up to the top of her arm to the shoulder joint, which is there. And then this goes in, and then that's kind of quite dark in there, because that's the, um, and I'm gonna rub all this out, so it doesn't really matter. We can just block this in, and we can block, she's got, just see the shape of her face, so we can rub that bit out later uh, so what i want to get in first is the arm and her elbow which is that and this is the back of uh, a hip that's going to be a hip bone there and then we get an angle for her arm this arm and the hand so again we just look at the shape of that arm and we give her muscles yeah so you got the hand which is similar and then we get a knee, so the knee is quite big, okay, because it's quite, she's holding the knee and it's a very big area inside that uh, negative space. So the hand is actually just coming over her knee, like that, and then that's the wrist as well. We can block that in slightly and the darks in here. I'm just looking at the total values as well. I'm doing them while I'm drawing. Uh, from a knee, you can see the uh, top of the bra, and then the angle of, of her other arm, which is this. So you can measure it like that. You do the angle. Draw a line first, and that's where the wrist is on this arm, and the wrist on this arm is just next to it, and then you go in that way. And we can see the fingers, which is just kind of a curve away. But if you actually put the shape in first like that without actually drawing a lot of fingers and then you've got the wrist bone and that's coming to a crease in her elbow which is there and we've also got this negative space which is here and we can just see the front of her leg but it's quite dark that so we can blend that in uh, which also blends into the side of her arm and we can see the back of her and there. Okay, we can get rid of charcoal very easily, and that's the reason we use willow. So from this end now, we've got the that arm, which is it in the face, which is like, this is a hair as well. And then we've got this other knee. So if I take a line down from around like that, you can just see that this other knee is quite over here, it's past past the leg and it's also going to be joining to her hip on the other side so we have to make sure we get the angle out and we can't see that so we can blend all that in. Uh -huh. 
the word the knee is that one. And then from this hand, like this, you get the shape. From this hand, you're getting the crease there. And then we're getting foreshortening because that's the bottom of a foot and that's the front of a knee there. All right. So right next to this hand, we've got the heel, which is like that. And then the instep and then the toes. And that should take you right up to this edge. So this is where you can fit your drawing within that space. We can look at a hip. Uh, I'm going to take a lot of this off. If you want to block in some of the darker bits around the figure, that's fine. Because we're going to remove a lot of the lighter tone with the brush, uh, with the, um, the rubber. So like I said, the shoulder is there, but then we can see the shoulder blades, which give you this angle like that. And also this is a dark negative space, like I said, so we can block that in. So the shape here is actually the shoulder. And then that's the hair going off. Okay, you can block that in. Because it's tactile stuff, yeah, so you don't press on as much, so you get a nice and softer feel for the subject. Oh yeah, yes. Ah, uh, here, I'm gonna block that in. It's all dark there actually. Uh, and it's, I know it's the background as well. I just block it in quick, blend all that. Okay. Wipe your hand. I always have a damp cloth. And then um, we've got the hair. Well, the head really big. Okay. In comparison. Uh, here, just where a hip going to be there and that joins up but you the back again becomes it comes out then you get the the um, shoulder blade so it's there's no line though it just actually just changes tone slightly from the back of it all right you get a nice highlight where anything bone is so where you get the dirks on the top of the shoulder there and you also get a light area so we can use the rubber for that then it goes in and it's dark and it's dark again here. So just darken it and then use the rubber. Uh, you can see a neck and you can see the front of a face just ever so slightly. You have to be very kind of careful. Sometimes you might be better not even putting the face in. But then you need to give her these muscles. Yeah. You need to give her muscles and uh, arms and things like that. So you get this lovely dark uh, eyes. And then that's the knee and the leg. So it's coming that way, but you can't actually see it. So we've got a nice dark area on the top of the knee. And then this is the floor, which is actually giving you a shadow. Yeah, blending it in like that. All right, it's a bit complicated at the moment. And then the top of the toes and things like that are just a little bit darker. But that is the underpainting. All right, and that's the back of a calf there. So you can just see that line as it disappears into a hand. So I've got a rubber and I've also got the tissue. The tissue will help to take off anything that's uh, you've got thick charcoal. So right, I've just got a bit of tissue. I'm going to take out a lot of this, uh, just blend it like the side of her arm and the front of her arm is a little bit lighter. But we can use, I'm going to use the, um, the rubber for that and the front of her shoulder. And then we've got this knee which is there and you've got a shadow there so we can use the, the tissue and you can also use uh, it's, can, you can see where the calf muscles kind of scrunched scrunched up there and that's giving you a, a bigger area but we can draw that in later and then here on the hip got a lot of light there like that so that's kind of blending into the background. We'll keep that nice and soft. Uh, as you go across the back here, and then you get the the other um, shoulder blade. Again, I can never remember that now. It's goes from my mind. And then you get some light on the front of the face and the hair. Uh, so this bit is helping me with the shape of the hair. You want to clean up 
You know, they put the, the floor, light in the floor, which is get rid of any marks you don't want. Um, we can use the rubber there a bit because it's quite, uh, quite a fiddly bit of that. And then uh, across the knee, this hand and this arm, just catching some light. And then the fingers here, or the back of this hand, we use the rubber for that. And then a bit of light on the back of her arm. Just blends in. Uh, you can see the bony part on the wrist. And you can also see the light part on this part of the knee. Uh, okay. And then the, the foot. Uh, this is just a flat shape. Okay. I get, uh, get uh, a line there. I'm going to put my charcoal. Got a line here. So from the foot, got the toes, then it comes out, and then we're getting this line, and then we're getting a, so it's overlapping, and that's for shortening that bit, yeah. And you're getting the same thing at the back of the leg, like that, which is the heel. So your heels are quite square at the back, and then the instep, which is giving you that which, uh, nice light. Okay, so that's a straight line here, near enough to the front of the knee, which is bony. Bony knees. Right, uh, rubber next. Don't fix it, or else you won't be able to rub out the uh, light bits. I'm just going to blend <coughs> the light between the shoulder and the back. You've got a nice subtle change in tone. So when we use the rubber, we're actually looking for very strong areas of light. Yeah? So if I kind of look for an uh, elbow, like on that arm, you see, there's a lot of light catching it and in the crease, and then at the back of the arm, we're getting a lot of light catching that, which blends in then to a back. So you can use the rubber like you would uh, a pastel, really. Um, you can put the brush strap <laughs> on and things like that if you want to keep a decent, yeah, like that. Shape. Uh, the front of her arm. There's a lot of light catching the front, and then because it's curving with the muscle, you've got the dark bit in the middle, haven't you? So you've got this shape. Uh, squint, <laughs> take your glasses off. Uh, we've got the shape here as well, which is quite light in places. Uh, we've also got a crease there, which you haven't put in. So that's an elbow, and then we've got a crease here between a leg, yeah, <coughs> and then this light area. Because the muscles are being squashed. Like uh, keep it simple, don't kind of put too much in at the moment. And then we can build up the tongue. Uh, the back of her arm, like that. Uh, the top of her shoulder, this is where you get the bony part on your shoulder. And then you get this line, like that, of softness. And then the back, a back. There's a big area there where there's a lot of light and then you're getting in the light on a shoulder blade. You've got a little bit of dark area and then you, you start to see a neck. It's these creases. You see? Um, so the tendons in the neck, a bit of a face. I've changed it to a light area now. Uh, a lizarine area, sorry. Um, here we can see where the bear is, so we can put that in, just take the light off a little bit. <laughs> it is quite dark in there. Uh, here we can see where the light's catching the crease in her arm, and then this muscle, the light's catching the top of that muscle like that, so blend it with your finger, you can see. This is why we use charcoal, because we can take it off and smudge it very easily. Uh, it gives the the tones we're looking for. Then we look at a knee. We've got a nice light just coming out from the back of that knee there, and then we've also got the shadows between her arm and a, a leg. Uh -huh. So you've got the side of the calf muscle there. It's just like lots of these little shapes joined together, and if you get them in the right place. It should look like a figure. <laughs> if you don't, then 
it's easy to adjust because you're just using charcoal. So where the knee is, you can see the bony parts. You can also see slightly darker areas uh, on the top of the leg and things like that. But the main area of dark should be here on that flat bit of the knee, okay? So you're seeing that and then you're also seeing the other side of the calf, which is just a little bit of light. And at the same time, this arm is catching a lot of light, which is going all the way down to the wrist again. And this hand's covering the back of this hand. So we can see where it's blending into the rest of the arm like that. Uh, you're not getting any reflected lights, but we're going to be delicate about that. So I'm going to redo that with some uh, compressed charcoal after as well. And then the back of her hand on this, so you've got the, you've got the, uh, what do you call them? Knuckles. Yeah, you're not looking for them. You've got the knuckles, and then you get the back of her hand where that uh, bony part is on the wrist, and then at the back of her hand that's quite light. Right, so you just do these shapes, and you can see the bony part and that, uh, that part of her wrist as well, and that's coming this way. All right, so a little bit of time, and then on this leg, we've got the light catching that knee. It goes bony there, because the knee is a bony, and it goes bony at the front, like that. Because they're bony, yeah. Uh, and then we see where it overlaps there. It goes a little bit lighter, overlapping, and that's the calf muscle, which is about here. Overlapping, then we get into uh, the back of her heel, uh, the ball of the foot, the toe, and the foot catch quite a bit of light and just take the light off. Okay, so we can use sometimes, like I say, if you've got a lot of charcoal on, it's quite difficult to get the charcoal off because you start to just rubbing it about, you know what I mean? So you want to kind of remove it. We're kind of trying to keep subtle changes. Uh, where we need something kind of darker, like this area, um, we've got a kind of shape here, which is the shoulder, and then we've got the shape there, which is quite dark, yeah? uh, which goes into just below her, her, um, her neck. Uh, this area is quite dark, so we can block that in. And then here where we get the knee coming out, lovely light. Lovely dark against that light, and then the shape of your knee giving you that bony bit, yeah, uh, and that's coming out as well. So, where we get the calf meeting the the other leg, uh, the thigh, sorry, we get a shape, the other leg, and then we get the shadow here curving like that. So, we can draw that in, and we also get a shadow at the front, yeah, just going from quite away. And then we get to the hand, which is going off Check the pit. This is willow. Still willow. Still willow. Don't use compass unless you're uh, absolutely certain where where you're going to leave things. There is a shadow from this arm going around the leg. Uh, all right, and there is a dark going into the fold behind the calf muscle. There. You can actually see this, uh, that is her other foot there, sorry, which is part of this leg, there's a foot there, okay, <laughs> that's the front here and this is the bit, casting a shadow on the, fl on the floor and we also get a lovely shadow here, brings out the knee, that's the dark bit, the bony bit of your knee, uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, yeah, don't have to do too much. Um, keep it simple. We're going to fix the laser and then start rubbing out with a cloth because that will give us our lovely uh, highlights and colours. Uh, hair as well. I mean, you've got the hair. Use the rubber to give the light on this side of her hair. Can you see? So you've got reflective light there. <coughs> We've also got the hair. It's in the floor and it's catching the light, so you use the rubber, excuse me, just to put in the hair catching the floor, catching the light. 
as it goes down in the front. Little thin straight, uh, thin areas at the front, bigger, lighter areas towards the back. But she has interpretation. She's got a little bit at the front, which is actually kind of reflected light as well, and then that's where her face is. Anyway. <coughs> okay, stand back. This is going to be a right subtle tone. Um, I know it's green, but it doesn't matter. You can go back to the white of your paper and the front bit of the knee. So I'm not going to use any compress. I'm just going to fix it. Okay, to give it a bang so all the dust comes off. Uh, so the colours are coming through. It's quite an abstract shape. It's quite light. It's uh, really interesting. Actually. You could have turned it upside down and done it as well. That would give you a lovely kind of abstract shape. So it's worth trying doing upside down um, painting if you want. <coughs> so we got this. I'll just bring out the shape of that arm now because that's quite dark on the right. <coughs> Coffee again, Jacko, not Covid. Um, and that's where this shadow is going to bend around her leg into that darkness. Anyway, I've got some. Fix the tip. Uh, I'm just going to start at the top, put my way all the way down. Make sure you get everything. Uh, you don't need to do it too much. Here's the point where people have really, really lots of problems with the fix the tip. I don't know why. Where's your air spray? I've got air spray as well. But um, I couldn't get any, so I just used fix the tip. Why? I used this up first, then I used my air spray. I thought it was too rustic to have. Some fixatives there. If you put too much on, sometimes it's waterproof, so it will just wash everything out. Um, so you can dry that off again. I'm going to use a dryer. Just like that. Um, I think I've just noticed that there's a lovely light on the floor, but because I've put air spray on, so I can't take it off, so it doesn't really matter. Just put that light in, it disappears. Brings out the front of her foot. Um, <clears throat> and if you touch it, keep a clean finger, get your damp cough, which should be like that. Yeah, damp cough, clean finger, wipe off excess charcoal, and then uh, keep your finger clean and dry. I mean, and then just touch your picture, and if it doesn't come off, go out too much. It should be okay to glaze. Yeah? If it's still coming off, give it another fix. I'll just do this in a little second. Usually it's where you've got a lot more dark. Alright. Uh, dry it again. Always make sure your hair spray is dry. Or you fix the tip. And then we're going to glaze it again. So you could actually glaze it with water, but I'm going to use some burnt sienna just to warm up. That'll warm up the green, but it'll also warm up uh, the yellows. So the burnt sienna, lots of water. Yeah. So we call it a glaze because you can see through it like that. Yeah. But uh, not loads of paint. So again, we've got the top. You can glaze the whole thing. I can glaze just bits of it, tie it up to all the way down and do it quick. You don't want to be blending all these tones together. Uh, uh, sometimes it's nice to just leave a hair so you get splatters and hair on the floor and whatever. Uh, if you want to get rid of some drips, it's probably a bit uh, a lot of light on that at the moment, yeah. You're getting a light from the window, but uh, when it dries, and don't do anything till it's dry, I'm just blending away to get rid of some of these uh, these runs really in the figure. So you don't want too many runs. You want it to be nice and subtle changes in tone. All right, and dry it again. Hair dry is important today.
Yeah, I'm not going to. Uh, uh, I'm not going to uh, spend. <laughs> a lot of time fiddling about with this to do it quite quick. So again, we use a, a damp cloth. I'm, I'm going to rub out the uh, light bits. So with the damp cloth technique now. I can do subtle changes in tone. It's just like when you get a light area next to another area that's mid-tone value. This is why we put the uh, the, paper, the tones on or the uh, cover the whole paper with um, with uh, charcoal, willow charcoal, just to give you the main tone value. Can you see where this? The light is there, it's like you've got a body part on the shoulder, which is going to be quite light, but then you can blend that in to the rest of her arm, like that. Um, where you're getting muscles kind of scrunching together, compacting, then you're going to get like bulges where the muscles are, so you get this kind of bulge on yeah, the thigh. But keep that subtle because don't really want it to be too light because uh, I want the, the figure to come forward back of her arm like that. Uh, this is the cool area this is where you can plan it so you can have warm areas and cool areas on your figure uh, so now I can use cloth just make keep using little bits of it to make the highlights because you're on gesso, you will go back to the white gesso underneath and it should actually stay um, white. It shouldn't come off because as long as you've done it thick enough, the problems with things like that, if you don't put it on thick enough or you don't let it dry or you put it on too thick and it's not dry, all these different things. Yeah. So I'm going to rub out the light on the back now and that warmth is. You can see the different tendons in the neck here and on the shoulder. You see, and where you're getting that light on the back, and, like that. <coughs> and you can make you can do them slowly, just make sure you get them in the right place. Here, like for instance, the reflected lights against mid tone values. You can just see. Um, like an eyebrow and then the side of a face going down to the chin here so like that <coughs> which goes into the neck there. if you go too light we can always glaze it again and you can always put uh, a bit more charcoal on so here we've got the you can just see one of the vertebrae there like that and that goes into the back Try and keep little changes in tone. Yeah. Um, you go into a hair where you've used the rubber, so you can use the, the cloth to do the same thing. Here, that goes back and that goes into the shoulder at the back. There's a little kind of area there which is a dimple in a shoulder blade. Um, I'll have you squint. Take your glasses off. Just keep squinting. <laughs> and so you're just using the cloth to get the same value that you did with it, but you can rub to the white because of, of this uh, gesso. Right. And calf muscle.
the end of it, went to the back there, and it disappear. And I'm the back of her arm, and change the tone. Stand back. <coughs> Every now and again, stand back. Mm. It's hard if you're sitting down, but uh, you get got these creases in her elbow. Uh, but you also get this light at the top. And then from there, she get a little bit of light on the forearm. Uh, like that. Uh, where the light is on her, which is this bit. Bigger area there. Because she's catching the sun, she's catching the light. Yeah. It disappears. <coughs> There's a bit there as well. Yeah, okay, we can use the background. So we use the uh, the floor to give us some texture. So if we wet it, we can rub out better. You see, so we can give her a, a head going a bit darker than that. So we're going to use some more charcoal. As well. That goes into where the leg is, uh, the bony part of the knee. It's lighter at the front. You also get some kind of reflections in the in the shadows because the shadows are not just dark shapes. <laughs> Where the bulging muscle is, it's lighter usually. <laughs> Side of the knee, bony bits, it's lighter. And we can also use uh, white pastel there after. You can do a bit of covering up if you make a mistake and go through the gesso. Uh, you know. Rub about too much. You can always bring it back. <laughs> so this is the the leg. This is the other arm. Where you're getting the wrist is going to be light because it's bony. And in the back of her hand here. It's quite difficult doing detail with the cloth. Uh, you have to use your nail. Uh, so if we do the fingers like that, and then the knuckles, the knuckles are lighter. So you need to get those light areas on the knuckles, you see. And this is a little finger because her arm, so that her thumb is actually. Here, that's the thumb catching the light. We could paint, we could draw in that later. And this is a little thing here, and then a bit on the back of her hand. So where you get the tendons as well. <coughs> and then the bony bits are on the wrist, I think. Anyway, that's the idea. Let's keep rubbing away. Yeah, good workout. Um, front of a knee, the reflected light in a knee because you're going to get some reflections here. Where you get the darks on that side, and then you get the reflections on the other side. We're going to add some compressed charcoal. Uh, down to the feet, like that, front of the leg, onto the foot, big toe, front of the foot, nice and light. You don't have to do all the toes, just make it a shape. People are that clever they can think, I know what that is, it's a foot with some toes at the ends. Eh? So you don't have to put them in. Unless you want to do. <coughs> anyway, that's the shadow there, and then reflected light on this side, uh, side of her arm, careful there. And then this knee, you can bring that over a bit, make it bigger. See? 
And then I'm going to use some compressed charcoal for my darker bits. Right. So again, make it, make sure it's uh, dry. This is quite, uh, quite light at the moment. Where I've got the photo now, I can actually strengthen that dark with some compressed. Because uh -huh. this is giving me a, a kind of shadow. See? Because the light is coming from above. I also get the back of the um, heel and the other foot. I actually catch the other foot there. So we do this thumb and then there. <coughs> I'll give the shape of the thumb as it comes down. Like that. And then the other fingers are just disappearing around the corner. Uh, so the front of the thumb is actually a little bit darker. Goes to the wrist. All right, and then where the calf and the other, I'll just make that bigger actually. <coughs> where the uh, calf muscle and the thigh muscle meet, you get a nice dark catch. <coughs> Let's concentrate here. The shadow around that thigh and then front of the arm and then the other arm you see just enforcing reinforcing sorry those um, shapes which are quite dark against the arm uh, use your finger to blend it this is why we use Compressed charcoal or charcoal, <coughs> so we can use um, blending techniques. If you don't like using your finger, get a rolled up piece of paper called a torture long, so you can make your own. Uh, just a line there, just blend it into that arm. Um, we get something quite light. Usually get something quite dark next to it. Yeah. So, so you can bring it out and then blend it. But it's just these little shapes. Well, I'm using the compressed charcoal to give me some of the stronger shapes. Yeah. If I'm not big enough, I can move out it more. Keep standing back. Yeah. Get these lovely colours. Bones. Uh -huh. so that's the front of them and then you get this kind of shape to the knee and then it goes around the corner but it also gives you a shadow on the floor yeah. and a bit of a darker shadow on top of the knee and the leg uh -huh. so here it disappears into the that space between her arms and her leg, or the other leg, sorry. I'm going to emphasize the dark bit on the brow, which leads to a face, which leads to a cheekbone, which leads to the chin. It's all one. And the link. So this is the elbow. Yeah. This creates a lovely shadow. Like that. Goes around the leg and then blends into the rest of the leg. So it disappears. But you can, if you want, put a line in and then blend it. So we've got the shape. <coughs> Back, uh -huh. her hair, and her hair is quite dark here. But uh, whatever you do, don't just block it in. What you want to create is this dark shape against this dark shape, which is the floor. 
when you put a line in, just blend it because it disappears then. We can carry on with this, which is it's because it's it's actually coming this way like that. So might be better just not having it in really because it's blended right. It's actually connected this to a thigh, and then that's the front of a foot, a leg, which is going down to a foot. You can just about see here um, the heel of her other foot. Kind of. right. Oh yeah, yeah. She can actually. I can. You can just about see it. So out of those complicated areas, you start to make sense of what you're looking at. Yeah. Thank you, Len. Okay. <laughs> that shit. That shit. Uh, back of the thigh, crease between there, and, and just the hair here because this is very dark on the floor. But like I said, I don't want to just block the whole thing in. I want to keep some tone. Uh -huh. You could have a few strands. Uh, the bad air there, it's coming out. Uh, where you've got this shape as well, keep some of the lights. We're going to use a bit of pastel if you want to, white pastel because you can glaze or you can varnish white pastel, soften that edge, just on that. <coughs> Subtle, and that is quite light. Okay, what time is it? Oh, budget time, quality. So, just to help me a little, little bit, I've got some sienna again, a bit of water. I'm going to blend it over that. No, I haven't sprayed it or anything, I've just done it like that. <laughs> we need it to dry. So that's kind of warmed up the green bit. And you've probably seen a lot of what? A lot of shiny water again. Soft brush again. Hook it back, bring it out, shake it all about. Compressed chuck, uh, white pastel. Dry strap. Gonna get a lot there. Uh, top of her arm. Start looking at these little areas. Can't varnish it then, that's what I suppose saying later. Um, the highlights on the muscles, which is the bits like uh, the bony parts, you know, which is very helpful in the charcoal. Just put in these creases in. Oops. Um, Face. You can see where some of the hair, you can actually see her ear, her ear there, but uh, you know, some of the hair coming out. Um, take a bit off the bra. Yeah, it's a little bit lighter there because you're getting more light catching it. Yeah. So his chest, a little bit there. See when it goes like 
when it dries them in, it's a bit more difficult to remove. So, uh, re wet it. Floor. We can create textures. Around the figure. So they go into a foot. I'll leave that a little bit because that will take off uh, some of the lights, some of the jackal. Yeah. Heel. Come to the foot, side of the leg. You can just kind of rub that, you can see, and get these little marks where the water has been. Areas. Back of the head. So this is where the lights are casting the shadow. And then we can varnish it afterwards. So a cup of tea, a drink, I mean. Are you not varnished? Yeah, but probably won't get to the stage of varnishing this one. Now you have to fix it again. <clears throat> well, that's uh, around. I'll blend that into there because it disappears. And I'm going to go into her hair now because we've got a lot of shine there actually. And again, I'm just picking up little bits on top of her head. Actually, some of them are not as strong as that. This, this is the bear. That. Uh, the light on that knee. Yeah, we can 
start looking at all these other lights on the craft. Around the fire. Actually, draw a lovely strong light there. Bend it in. <coughs> How's the sun going? Terrible. Um, back to this, the heel. Anything down there I want to keep soft, don't have it too harsh. <coughs> this is a hard white pastel, in case I haven't told anybody. And then the front of the leg again, got a light there. Mm. And <coughs> You can't hear me now because Lynn's got the air dryer out, so carry on a bit. Is that better? Yeah. And you get the uh, knuckles. Hand. Look at the hand. Okay. Student, that. I want Making to get back to class. Eh? I want to get back in class. Bit more light there. Yeah, and then off. Her hair. Get to the. What? Get to. Grease. Yeah. Who's Grease? Oh. Two has been. I know. <laughs> now we can use compressed as well, so we can go back in. Uh, Willow, sorry. Not uh, compressed, just to put a dark in. Uh, just make it. Book it in. You can use paint as well if you want to. So when you can I ask you a question? Yes. For everybody else as well. When you get when you rub him back with a cloth. Yeah. What's the difference with the cloth and the rubber? Nothing. So the rubber rubs, rubs the charcoal light right? and the cloth rubs yeah. the paint and the charcoal light. Right? So well, the rubber does the same thing, but it just gives you the cloth will give you lighter tones because you're going back to the white gesso underneath, aren't you? Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'll emphasize that a bit because that's a bit where there's a shadow on the floor. Like that. Just goes that way. Blend the shadows in. Uh, front of the foot. <laughs> Don't need to do the toes. <coughs> and uh, another hair. The shadows.
here. The player over at the back of it. We can have warmth here. So this is a bit of sienna again. Just to warm up all grain. There you have it. How is it? Here too. Well, here too. I have to get a little hand on this box. <laughs> People think I'm joking, but I lost my wander. Didn't I? I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. Take it to that rack. It's, I, think I'm, I think I've done it. Uh, Messed it up actually. I forgot. I thought it had just fell off, but um, it goes inside. Anyway, I shouldn't be talking about it. So you can soften areas, glaze again, have more light on the floor. Uh, floorboards. You want. Get some light here on the leg. You are going to get reflected lights so here, aren't you? Even though it's in shadow. Oh. <coughs> Keep that in the background. That's that's about it, actually. Um, yeah, you fix it again and varnish it again. Uh, varnish it, sorry, not again. Varnish it. A bit more light on the leg, the bony bits of the knees, like that. Side, the front of the leg, at the elbow, and then we uh, fix it. <coughs> and the uh, shoulder. Subtle changes in tone here. Yeah. And you can glaze it again if you want. Sometimes I, I like to just make it look like she's a, there's a sheet on the floor and she's just lying on this because you can easily just take the light off that make it look like uh, folded fabric which is what we use when we do life do we? have a, a sheet you want to lie on
Fiddling. Stop. Stop fiddling. You can pick dust up as well off your picture just to soften areas. That's the idea of putting uh, colour on first. Some people think, well, what's the point? <laughs> it's just another way of actually dent. Opaque paint. Give that nice uh, softness in the background. Away from the figure. So it goes away from you. Alright. Time is it? I'm going to leave that because I can use I can use more paint so I can glaze over it again. Um, I might do some of the background here actually, but uh, I'm just going to leave it to dry. So I'll take the tape off, it's quite wet, and then we'll varnish it when I'm happy with it. You could varnish it and then start colouring it because you can paint acrylics over. Water based varnish, yeah. As long as it's water based varnish. Not, uh, not damar, which is oil based. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God, it's gross. It's going to be winter. Right, thank you for watching. Um, I'll probably do a bit more to it and then uh, I'll put it on. Well, that's the idea with the colour underneath. Subtle colours. Subtle. Okay, guys, thank you. Um, what day are we? Monday. <laughs> Wednesday, see you Wednesday. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing yet. Bye now. Ta